Next up is a cleaner, eco-friendly way to cook outdoors. Hi, Sharks. I'm Ricky Franco. And I'm Oren Franco, and we're from New York City. We're here asking for $200,000 for 10% equity in our company. Sharks, summertime means soaking up the great outdoors and grilling up a mouth-watering masterpiece. But let's face it, grilling with traditional charcoal we've all been accustomed to has become more work than it's worth. From logging bags of heavy coals, constantly babysitting the fire, and cleaning up all this messy ash, yikes, uh. it leaves you with no time to enjoy your food and your company. So, Sharks, we reinvented this outdated experience and elevated it to a whole new level. We created Prime, Prime 6. 6. Our charcoal is 100% sustainable, all natural, made solely from repurposed sawdust. Our hexagon shape allows heat to evenly distribute throughout the grill, burning longer and hotter than any other. And the best part? It's completely reusable. That's right. When you're done grilling, simply turn it off. Close the lid to choke the oxygen and let the fire rest. And when you're ready to get back to grilling again, you can simply relight it. And when it finally does burn all the way out, there is no cleanup. Prime 6 is self-consuming, leaving your grill with low to no ash. Our product is all natural and chemical free, made with absolutely no nasty fuels or additives to help save trees while keeping you and Mother Nature healthy in the process. So tell us, who's burning to light up a deal with us? <laughs> Good job. Wow. Good job, guys. Can and you. you tell us what it's made out of? It's not compressed coal? It's not compressed coal. It's actually compressed sawdust. We use only hardwood. Mm -hmm. And we compress the sawdust first, and then we carbonize it to create the product. And do, what does it cost versus ordinary charcoal? We're paying less than half on any average charcoal because our briquette saves you three times the amount of charcoal you so would need with any other. the value proposition is I don't have to clean up a mess. I'm paying half as much. I'm burning hotter. Price point is for the same size log, it's the same price. So yes. one of these versus the log that I might, a nine pound log that I might see at a, at a home Let depot. Let me answer that. This nine pound actually cost $18.99 retail price, but it is actually equal to 30 pounds of charcoal. You sell this for $18.99 retail, and what does it cost you to make it? $3.39. That's not bad. We currently sell the 22 pound to Walmart for $26.64 and we sell the nine pound for 10, anywhere from $10.99 to $12.99. How did you come up with this idea? We saw a similar looking product in Vietnam years ago. So had that stuck with you for years? Like you constantly talk about, remember that talk charcoal? We it? always talked yeah. about that. And you know, we back home, we used to grill all the time. Like this is something that's, you know, far, part of the family. But the Vietnam like it is right story here. tells me something else. There's nothing proprietary about this, right? We haven't Wait, done that second. part yet. You're jumping well, the gun. Chop, yeah, chop. We said, listen, we want to be making this, we want to be taking this process and making it 100% sustainable. What we do, we take the sawdust when it's still raw, we compress it under, you know, a few tons of pressure. While it's wet? Yeah. No, you heat, it up, you, you heat it up a little bit, you get it warm. The natural oils from that sawdust are enough to bind it back to woods, denser than any wood you would find in nature, and carbonize it like lump charcoal. Do you have a patent? We have uh, applied for a provisional patent. Uh, we have applied for a design patent, and we have a, we have a patent pending on the, um, on the, on packaging the hexagon well. packaging as well. So how long will this burn for? This will burn to four to eight hours. Really? Depending yes. on the size without, of the bunches. Without replenishing. Sales. Yes, so uh, we launched 12 months ago. We are currently over $300,000 in sales. And uh, we're selling food service, retail, both in stores and e-commerce. how are you selling? Are you advertising or are you going door to door? Do you have distri distributors or most Let of your sales? Let me tell you the story. <laughs> so we basically loaded the back of our cars and I went out driving every day to restaurants two stores, basically selling hustle, the product. Hustle, hustle, I like wow. it. Wow, and then also I, I noticed that you've said the word sustainable several times and it's at the very top of your packaging here. So what is your mission with the company? I don't think you can do anything really without um, doing some good as well. And I agree. So the fact that it's natural and it's made from sawdust is actually cleaning waste. 
There's another element to the company um, that is um, you buy one, we plant one. Mm. So we've partnered up with this amazing organization called One Tree Planted. Cool. And for every pack, whether it's the, the nine pound or the 22 pound, we plant a tree. And what does that cost you to do that? One dollar per tree. <laughs> you valued this business at two million bucks, 200,000 for 10%, right? Yeah. You're not making any money yet after you pay yourselves. Uh, we don't pay true, ourselves and we, we are profitable. What, you don't pay yourselves? No, but we will pay for ourselves starting next week. You will what? We oh, will pay oh, ourselves oh, starting oh, next week. Oh, 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 oh. This is $130,000, the six-figure PO from Lowe's that arrived yesterday, and this is our first launch. Good for wow. you. Good for you. Going okay. next week, that's making us a $450,000 company. That's the beginning of the journey. You want to make this company. thing big? You're yeah. going to accept this offer. You ready for it? Uh -huh. There's a reason they I call me feeling. Mr. Wonderful. You know that. We know that. I'll give you the $200,000 for 25%. Ooh. 25%. And I'll tell you why. This is going to take work. You gotta open up doors. I'd rather sell it direct, frankly. Yeah, we do 65% yeah. direct. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather blow that up because right now retail's chaos. You learned yourself how yeah. hard it is. But that's the deal. It would make me get up in the that's morning and chef wonderful. That's actually one of the wonderful. better offers Kevin's it is. ever made. It actually is. <laughs> so you, Mark and Mr. I did wonderful. a deal uh, a few years back with a product called Instafire. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. Instafire, you know, was a fire starter. And it's not a charcoal briquette like this, but my problem here is that Mark and I do have Instafire. And is it a conflict of interest? I'm, a, I'm a concerned about that yeah. because I don't want to do a deal with a company where you're competing with the company we already have. Because yeah. I'm not sure, I regrettably am out. What you've been able to accomplish is great, but it's just not a product that I get excited about, particularly with Instafire, you know, because I think it would create some conflict for me in working with them. So for those reasons, I'm out. Thank I appreciate you, Mark. it. So, right, well, you got an offer on the table, I, you know, Kevin. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, you want to do anything? You want to do it together, or I don't know? No, no, don't need any help. While well, you guys think about it, I just want to say I have to be super, super passionate about it, and I just don't feel that personal passion that you guys have. And so for that reason, I'm going to be out. Okay, thank you. thank you, Blake. Let me tell you one thing before, Damien, before you well, wait, decide. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Let's remember yes. that Mr. Wonderful yeah. made you an offer. Correct. If Damon drops out, bad things could happen. <laughs> because then I have ultimate leverage. Three sharks are out. Ricky and Oren have an offer on the table from Kevin for their innovative charcoal company, Prime 6. But they have yet to hear from Damon. Think about the Jeopardy. Now, I'm Mr. Wonderful for a reason, because I'm wonderful. But if I know Damon's out, I may squeeze a little bit. But Damon okay, isn't out. So, so why don't so you start thinking counter. about the only offer you have? Let me counter. Would you do it for 20%? No. Oh, no. Okay. okay. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't trust your own I'm, skills I'm to in this company. space. It is tough. It is hard. It's not going to be easy to sell restaurants for another year and a half. I want to go direct to customer. I have the channels to do that. And I'm also Chef Wonderful. We are not selling retail. You know why? There is no retail right now. It's very, very hard to get paid. And you're giving up 35% margin. That's the problem. I'd rather capture that margin for us so I can wet my beak. You understand? I do. OK. There's a lot of good logic right there. I mean, I'm out of the deal. But if I'm an entrepreneur right now and I just heard that, yeah, I think Kevin, I might take this Kevin deal. makes a lot of sense. Of course he does. He's Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> Damon, hey, if you don't uh, mind, I would love to hear. Listen, I am a professional griller. Yes, we really. Are. I am. But I you are not a chef. I'm a professional griller. That's interesting. I came from a neighborhood where it's simple and plain. The person behind the grill is the closest you'll ever get to royalty. That's it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to match Kevin's offer. Two hundred thousand dollars for twenty-five percent. Ooh, decisions, Ooh. decisions. It's well, it's just, it is just, who do you like more? Can you give us a few seconds? Okay. Okay. Kevin, you have a deal. You oh, like Kevin Moore! Uh, 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 David! Oh, wow. my God! Thank God I realized they were not bright. I'm going to sell the <laughs> out of this. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Thank you so much. Oh, my God! What just happened? Oh, what just happened? Next up is an innovation to a common kitchen accessory.
What's up, Sharks? My name is Tog, and I'm from Clifton, New Jersey. I'm seeking $150,000 for 20% equity in my company. Sharks, I love to cook, and tongs are one of the best tools that I have in the kitchen. But you know what sucks? It seems I never have enough when I'm cooking or serving food. You might say, just buy more tongs. Come on, nobody wants to do that. Look at these things. <laughs> they're large, they're clunky, they take up space, and every time you need them, the bird in a sink full of dirty dishes. <laughs> and that's why I invented any tongs. It's a simple, compact tool that transforms ordinary utensils into versatile kitchen tongs. Check out how they work. You just grab any combination of forks or spoons. Insert the handles through the rubberized slot, give it a firm tug, and instant tongs. <laughs> it's great because when you're working with multiple dishes, you don't have to worry about cross-contaminating food. You just detach and reload with clean ones. That's pretty cool. And smart. And when you're done, just pop them out and toss them in the wash. You got two spoons, boom, now you got tongs. How about forks, boom. Any tongs, any time. So who's ready to assemble some tongs and grab a piece of this company? <laughs> so we can make it here? Yes, you can. Just take the handles, slide them through the rubberized slots, give it a little tug. If it's a little bit loose, am I not doing it right? You put it down, then you pull it up. Oh, yep. got it. This is crazy. So how did you come up with this? So cool. I love product design. I've been a designer, a user experience designer for over 10 years. You know, I worked for Nintendo, AOL, I worked at Facebook, and I always wanted to design a physical product. My family's from Tibet, and we always had to have these parties, and I remember my mom, she always needed a lot of tongs for the different kind of dishes. She used to make tongs out of plastic utensils and tape them to clothesline pins. So that's the idea that I came up with as my first product. It's really brilliant. It really it is a great is. idea. And, Thank and you. did you patent this? No, um, for this V1, it wasn't worth it. So what I did was I ran a Kickstarter campaign. The original goal was $10,000. We ended up doing over $33,000, right? Did which, you ship everybody their tongs? Yep, so, so. And what did you sell them for and what did it cost you to make? Landed. So those are being sold for $19.99 for one, and our most popular was a two pack for $24.99. What did it cost you to make? $2. Look, tongs are as, as little as $9.99. Some yep. are even cheaper than that. It's like a standard utensil. I mean, there are thousands of tongs for sale. Definitely, and I've done the research. $19.99 was a pretty fair price. It resonated with people on the Kickstarter. We got a lot of great feedback. So there's no validation past Kickstarter, right? When I started selling this on my own, I got really good with social media ads. My return on ad spend was around a dollar, which wasn't much. But soon after, I got that to $3. But I ran out of money, I ran out of inventory. That doesn't make sense. With your margins, you shouldn't run out of money because you're getting paid up front because you're selling them online, and you should be able to recycle your buys. Yeah, so th this, this is the thing. There wasn't much inventory. We, so for, 20, for 2021, our sales were about $7,000. Since the Kickstarter campaign ended till now, you've only sold 7,000. Yes, because of COVID, our manufacturer had massive problems. So at that point, I said, okay, you know what, screw it. We're gonna work on version two. So in 2021, I spent time designing and working on Got version it. two. What's different? It has like a thicker, grippy oh, handle. A lot. One, it's using much better materials. It's more eco-friendly. It has a much more secure way of uh, attaching utensils. How much does that cost to make? a little over a dollar to manufacture. That's it? Yeah, so. Why is that one cheaper than this one? Because the production run for this would be much higher. So you're gonna just oh, make so more of it. Oh, so you were paying for a very, very low volume price. Yes. Okay, so I'm very involved in the kitchen space, the food space. You are on an interesting journey and you have a lot of enthusiasm, but I don't see much potential here at your price point. You gotta make this thing so inexpensive. Certainly 1999, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry, my friend. I'm out. So something in your passion for the design isn't translating in the market. I'm not saying you can't get there, but the early signs aren't great for me. So I, I, I don't see it. I'm out. You know what, Todd, I think it's a genius product, but you're only 10% of the way there. Having a great product is not near enough to have a great company. As an investor, as a shark, we'd have to come in and structure a lot of that for you because you're not there full time. 
So for that reason, I'm out. Hold on, Mark. Before you say anything, I already said it, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm doing this all by myself. This, this, this grind culture, right? This whole thing where you gotta give up everything to start something, to do something that you that you always dreamed about, is, is okay? What do they always tell you? Okay, you gotta put your family in financial crisis. You gotta give up seeing all your friends and family. You gotta sacrifice your, your health and, and lose sleep. You know, Nobody it, says that. Who told you that? Nobody I'm, says I'm, that. It's, I don't think any of us heard that. It's, it's out there. It's and that's, true, that's the you message. have to work 24 seven. I'm not saying this is easy work, but what I refuse to do is put my family in financial crisis. What I refuse to do is miss the most important Talk, time in my kid's you. life. It is your company, my friend. You get to make all the choices, but it's our money. And I'm gonna tell you again, I'm out. All right, Damon, what are you doing? I was more interested in Tog's uh, uh, letting us know how to become successful. <laughs> <laughs> the business is not commanding enough for you to be able to put full attention there. I agree with you, you need to do the basics to keep the bills paid and the lights on for your family, because if you don't have your family, you don't have anything. With that being said, you still got seven thousand dollars in sales. Well, because because of the fact that there was a lot of issues, I knew I know. What's no, man, you got seven thousand sales because you sold seven thousand. You you can't always externalize. No, I'm, the I'm issues. definitely not. This I'm, is your this is not. your company. It is your responsibility. It is your job. One hundred percent. I'm not. I'm not. Maybe you're that a little early. However, this is a flyer. I'll give you one hundred fifty thousand dollars for forty nine percent. But you know what? It's That's actually not, a bad, not a bad offer. That's not a bad offer. And honestly, Tug, I think he gave you a really good offer. Mine would be worse. And? So therefore, I'm out. I think you should take Damon's offer. Damon, can you do 40%? And you know what? Just for everyone out here, okay? Screw it. I'm going to say it, okay? What is it going to take? I'll quit. I'll focus on this 100%. I'm ready to go all in on Don't. this. Don't. You just had, you just Why gave us- Why haven't a whole speech about yeah, you not putting your speech. family at financial risk? Well, you know what? Who the hell knew that I was gonna get here in this spot right now? But you, you're selling yourself out of a deal. I'm not, I don't wanna speak for Damon, but he made you an offer, you countered, and rather than waiting to hear what he had to say to that counter, you went off in this wild tangent about screw it. Well, let's Damon, focus what on do you the deal. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking you're Damon. You're trying to Can show your dedication. Okay. Exactly. What do you wanna do, Damon? I'm gonna stay at the 49, and the reason I'm staying at 49 is because I want you to be in control. I want you to keep your company. Damon, I'm, I, love, I love your offer, and the fact that I got one is incredible. Let's make a deal. All right. Good. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Very good, man. Very like good. All right. Thank you. Muzzle top. Congratulations. I said I was gonna quit my job because of the fact that I got to this point and if I didn't go all in in front of the sharks, I would regret it forever. So, you know, I'm happy to be a flyer. I'll be his number one flyer. Next into the tank is a better design of a party staple. What's up, Sharks? I'm Tim Laux. I'm here today seeking $300,000 in exchange for 10% equity in my company. So drinks on tap are becoming more popular now than they've ever been before. People are absolutely loving the at-home draft experience. But the problem is most kegs and draft systems are big, expensive, and not portable. There's no way I'm gonna take this thing on a boat, on a golf cart. Heck, I probably can't even fit it in the fridge. There's no way that's happening. Kegs had problems until now. Meet Square One, the world's most efficient mini keg ever. Square One has the ultimate cool factor by providing more volume in less space, lets you bring not just beer, but your favorite drink on tap just about anywhere. Sharks sitting in front of you is your very own Square One. I filled it with a tasty wow. beverage. Pour yourself a glass and let's get down to business. Wow. Right. I like you and I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter, Mark, and Damon, you guys have beer. Mr. Wonderful, you have a vodka nitro espresso martini. Oh, damn. And Lori, yours is a John Daly. So it's the alcoholic vodka version of 
an Arnold Palmer. Wait, we need to do a toast. To the Chevy Tesla! Hey! What do you think of that one, Mr. Wonderful? Pretty good, actually. This is really good. So this is CO2 in this cartridge. So yours is the only one that's actually running on nitrogen. So that's a new product release. I always thought that draft beer, there, there was something fresher about that. Sure. But if you're putting mixed drinks in there, what's the value in that? Sure. So the value, like in the home space, is, for instance, like when we go out on the boat or we're doing things outdoors, we can batch a whole gallon of cocktails that we're going to take with us, like margaritas. Super simple to bring with us. Then anybody can serve themselves. Yeah. You make this like a little draft pour of any kind of drink. But wine, yeah. you don't do wine yeah. in this. You can right. do wine in this, right? So we actually have a wine product in the hopper that'll run on Argon with a different wine spout. We're not quite there yet, but that's kind of our third product. Tell us how the whole, yeah. all the pieces fit together. So basically square one, it's 128 ounces, so it holds either two growlers worth of beer, eight pints, 28 so ounces. that's a 12 pack almost. Yep, just about a 12 pack. Basically, you would fill it with your beverage of choice, whether it's a cocktail or beer, and then assemble the tap, and then you pressurize it so it runs on and CO2 then or nitrogen. And then it's good until cartridge. it's finished. Wait, 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 tell me how to disassemble it so I can sure. go put in another drink. Sure, so basically everything's threaded. It's got a pressure release valve on this side. So before you do any disassembly, you would pull the pressure. So right here? Yep, but you want to turn the valve off to the left. Right. You sure you want to be doing that? Dude, David, where are you <laughs> going? I'm not, is it my hands are so you know, blow your a, head off. Turn this thing. Pull this out. Pressurized thing Let's on there. Do this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to help you. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> you know, he said it was safe. I was trying to figure this out. Meanwhile, while he's blowing himself up, Tim. <laughs> Tim, you must have. Uh, we're gonna get because obviously, three million is quite a big valuation. You must have good sales so far. So we've sold over four thousand units. Uh, right now, lifetime sales are over 1.4 million. Wow. Okay. But how, over what last period of time? Months? Over a year. Yeah. Wow. And what have you made out of wow. that, Tim? So we lost about a quarter million last year. Oh, um, yeah. This That's year, okay. we're on track to make a 15% net. Okay. This is going to be our first profitable in the month, and we're on track to do over 200 grand this month in sales. Damn, nice. And how much are they? Uh, so that one right there in front of you retails for 259. That's not and bad. What, do you, what does it cost? Uh, it costs us 130. We make them in Washington State. Uh, last May, we set up our own manufacturing facility where we started adding and refining our processes so we could get the costs down to where we could be profitable. So I'm buying these things as a consumer for my home. Correct. This is not for a business. But it could be, right? But yes. So we focused 100% direct consumer on this. Really, the vision was in the commercial market. When COVID hit, we're like, okay, we're spending a lot of money developing and creating these products but we got to start bringing some money back through the door. And Tim, how did you come up with this then? What made you think of this? Sure. Uh, so I, I've always been an idea guy, never really took action on any, okay. but uh, it was November 2017, I woke up in the middle of the night, like, and for some crazy reason, I was thinking about the inefficiencies of round kegs. <laughs> and I'm like, everywhere they're stored, everywhere they're transported, everywhere they're refrigerated are square rectangular spaces. I just thought it would be a huge value. Okay. But Tim, as, yeah, yeah. As, us, as all of us being potential partners, how often do you wake up at 2.30 in the morning about thinking about a no, more efficient way to get hammered? <laughs> <laughs> Never, but I guess I was lucky. Yeah, right? Tim, so it is very, very cool, but I don't really comprehend the value of it because I'm just, I'm not a tap drinker, so I'm a little stuck there. I just, I don't think I, I get it as much, uh, sure. so I'm out. Thank you. So Tim, I have an important question because I'm in the wine industry. You know, there's a lot of delivery systems for, that actually try and keep wine from spoiling after you've had a little bit of a bottle, you put argon or nitrogen gas in it. Is the one you're making for wine, could I put three bottles of Chardonnay in here and then would the system, I'm asking if this yep. is the plan, you're gonna use argon gas to seal that surface from any oxygen hitting it. Correct. So for the next two weeks, I could be pulling out a glass yes. of Chardonnay. 100%. Well, that is a cool idea. <laughs> Tim, it's cool. Listen, it did pique my interest. Now, if I'm a wine drinker, right? What would be really cool is, is if you get that one figured out, I hope you'll come back in the tank with that. Sure. Uh, you don't have it right now, so I think you're onto something. I wish you good luck, but I'm out. Thanks, Corey. Tim, I, I can't see how I could help you turn this into a great business. I think it's a really neat invention, but I just can't, I can't scale this with you. So for that reason, I'm out.
Thank you, yeah, Peter. Tim, I love the product. I really, really do. Obviously, I'm clumsy with it. I'm not good with mechanics at all. I, I see the value for it. I'll definitely try to buy some because I think, I think you have a hit. I just don't know where I would fit with it. So for those reasons, I'm out. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Um, everybody out? Yep. Yes. Okay, so I'm intrigued, okay. When is the wine product coming? In less than three months. Why didn't you say that to me? <laughs> I, I guess I just didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm really intrigued with the white wine in the fridge and the red wine sitting out on the bar with the argon or nitrogen gas. That's a very cool idea. The industry's been trying to solve for that for 20 years. Absolutely. All right, I'll give you the 300K, I want 20%. I'll tell you why. I mean, you need someone like me to help you blow this up online because really you want to sell it direct to consumers. So what, what do you, do you think, do? Tim? No, I think it's great. I, I honestly, I know Mr. Wonderful has great senses in this space when it comes to beverage. Would you consider doing the 300 for 15% and meet me in the middle? No. It, it's a simple product. I like what you've done. I mean, other than Mark blowing himself up. But um, it's going to be work for me. I get behind this. We'll make a lot of money together. It, it, it looks beautiful. It fits in the fridge. And I, I'm going to take a flyer on it. I want 20%. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Smart well, done. well done. Smart. <laughs> It's beautiful. Kevin, it's beautiful. Thank you. you did a great Congrats, job. Tim. Congrats. Thank Congrats, you, guys. Tim. I appreciate well you. Well done, Tim. Fantastic. Well, thanks, man. Good Lord. All right, Tim. Thanks, Kevin. I like that deal. Kevin. I like that yeah, deal, Kevin. I think it's a great deal. Square Keg's been my life on the side from my day job for five years. It's been a complete grind, but it's enabled me to leave the corporate handcuffs behind once and for all. And now that I'm working with Mr. Wonderful, I'm super confident we're going to take this thing to the moon.